Most people operate at about 5% of their real potential. I teach this to people because it's important to know this about yourself and about others. Nearly everyone I meet doesn't fully trust in their own greatness, or they don't know what to do to make it happen, or they're not prepared to make the commitment. For one reason or another, every person who's been through the forge has that realization that the other 95% is there, and then they find me. Whether by accident or by design, they find me. And by the time we're done the year, they're better negotiators, they're better leaders, they're better teammates. Each and every one of them, without exception, would testify that they're able to do things that they thought was impossible. They didn't think they had it in them. They just assumed that they weren't meant to create new and exciting outcomes, that they weren't meant to lead or to influence, that they weren't meant to make real change. So far more important to me than teaching Scrum or teaching Agile is teaching these skills through an immersion experience like no other in the world. The Forge is now accepting applications for the 2022 cohort. Just go to badassagile.com and click on the banner to join an upcoming information session and put your application in to join us now. The elegance of agility is that it teaches us where we should redeploy our energies because we're focusing on the wrong things and leaking time and effort. But are we listening? That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hello, friend. Welcome back. I'm happy to see you. Thank you for tuning into this show yet again. I appreciate so much your support, your comments. It's you that makes this all possible and keeps me doing it. I have an important topic to discuss because I have a theory. I think that most people work fairly hard. We're busy. You ask people, how you doing? I'm busy. I'm crazy busy. So busy. Unbelievably busy. People are doing stuff. But I believe we struggle because we're not doing enough of the right stuff. I think we work on things that don't deliver the highest value or the greatest impact. And I think we do that because either we fear putting our name on the thing that might potentially sink the boat, or we're not 100% sure if we can or how to influence or control the outcomes that we want. But before we dig into it, let's take a moment to remember why we're here, to create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what we need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who we need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast so that you never miss an episode. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel where you have tons of extra information and sometimes downright entertainment for you. And you can also check me out at theagilehorizon.com and you can come join the discussion in the Facebook Badass Agile Listener Lounge. So where should our effort actually go? Well, instead of acting in circles around things that we can't impact, what if we focused on the things that we could actually control? the things that we should control, the things that we've been told we're not allowed to question. You see, we spend so much time trying to control predictability. We try to estimate how long things will take, how much they'll cost, how big they'll be. We try to predict where a certain person will be on their accountability, on the overall project progress by a certain date and time. Or we argue around the things that will give us more stability and predictability of outcome, like process minutia. Should your backlog have 100 items in it or should you cleanse it every 60 days? Doesn't matter. Should I hold my stand up at 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning, or 10 in the morning? It doesn't matter. The mechanics of what you do and how you do it will become obvious as you run, as you practice. Start somewhere and adapt as necessary. That is the fastest and easiest way to overcome paralysis. But look around on social media. 
Look around at the things that they're teaching in certified classrooms. We're talking about the finer points and debating the minute details of how. Instead, spend your valuable time focusing on the things that you can control, like, number one, how do you spend your time? Are you making choices to go to meetings where you don't contribute, where the topic doesn't concern you, just because you've been told you need to be there? Worse still, are you one of the people who books those meetings? Do you complain incessantly about your lack of time, when really the amount of time you have available to you is 100% in your control? Are you wasting time and giving priority to responding to messages, opening your emails, granting permission to all of the notifications and distractions that compete for your attention in the middle of your most important work? If so, try to control those. What would happen if you put laser focus on those items instead of trying to make perfect estimates or perfect PowerPoints? Well, what about your reputation? You and only you can control how you show up. Do you keep your promises? Do you show up on time? Do you show up prepared? Do you listen more than you speak? Do you show strength and courage in action? Do you go where others fear to go? Are you supportive? Are you more interested in other people's success than your own? Those things constitute your reputation, and you're far more likely to achieve whatever it is you want in life, whether it's a leadership position or whether it's just being remembered well and respected. Because you can control those outcomes. Your focus, your attention on how you show up every day determines your reputation. Not whether you know the answer to the question of what's the maximum number of items you should keep in a backlog. What about your action level? Your ability to take a problem or an accountability and execute to completion. This is something you can control. And this is where you should put your energy. Do you delay or procrastinate on the tough stuff? the things you don't want to do? Do you take action on items that should have been delegated, given to somebody else, or deferred or denied altogether? Your level of action, how you prioritize and how you focus, is key to your ability as an Agilist. This is what makes Agile tick. And yet, how many times do we allow our action level to wane or to be swayed by our own inertia, our own fears, or the demands and priorities of other people. Here's the next thing you should put some effort into, your influence. Do you know how to stand up for what you know to be right? Do you know how to not back down when you know backing down will mean an unacceptable compromise? Do you know how to create victory for both sides when you negotiate or sell an idea? This is a skill, and it's a learned skill. It requires knowledge, but it also requires courage, and it requires practice. But the sooner you start pointing your energy to becoming more influential, the easier success becomes. Hey, here's one. Do you monitor your attitude? A lot of people that are extremely negative don't know they're negative. I'm guilty of this sometimes as well. It happens all the time. I know I can get down when things don't go my way. I know I can get a little bit angry when I'm frustrated. But what I do do, what I am capable of, is noticing when it happens so I can choose differently in the moment. That's the path to self-mastery. So what about your attitude? Does it suck? Do you make excuses and gossip? Do you engage and indulge in poor me syndrome? Do you get down and throw your hands up and quit long before you should have? And worse, do you spread that attitude to others? Because look, if you're a scrum master, if you're a coach, people are watching you and your behavior ignites similar behaviors in others who trust, look up to, and like you. So what is your attitude doing to your team? Are you lifting them up and enabling them? Because every leader talks about how they want to enable their people. But are you bringing your crappy attitude and actually slowing them down or hurting them? Time to do a reality check and see. Worst part is nobody will tell you. Unless you're on film or someone really brave or someone that you really trust tells you that your attitude sucks, the only person who can sense this and do something about it is you. This requires energy but it's a great investment. And what about your self-discipline, self-reliance, and your habits? This is an area where you have to build the self-discipline muscle. It requires massive energy to always do the right thing, to keep pressing, to do a little more, to keep asking questions, to find a way or make a way. 
It's also the little habits, like beginning your day or a task with intention. When I say asking great questions, I mean questions like, why am I doing this? Is this valuable? Does this help move the needle on whatever I'm trying to achieve? This requires massive energy, and usually sometime after your big carb-loaded lunch, you're going to find that you run out of energy for exactly these things. But let me tell you this about leaking energy. The one place you don't want to spend your finite energy resources is worrying about the past, trying to predict the future, or trying to change people. And if we're really honest, look around your team room. Look at yourself. How much time do we spend in that zone? If instead, you redirect your energy to the things I've described today, making the most of your time, becoming the kind of person that you always hoped you could be, taking massive action rather than procrastinating, wasting time, or hiding behind empty distractions, learning skills like connecting to the hearts and minds of others, keeping a positive mental attitude, and building great daily habits, if you put your energy there instead, you'll actually find that you have infinite, boundless energy. It's all about how you use it, guys. I hope you found this one useful. You can reach out as always at badassagile.com. Find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile or on Instagram at badass agile. Be sure to check me out on Clubhouse too. I hang out and run chats in there just to keep connected with y'all. Listen, I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. I look forward to next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.